The question's going to be up. Yep. Welcome, everyone, to Mission Impossible. You are at the APH Virtual Excel Camp for Junior High School. We are so happy to have you with us today. Feel free to drop in the chat who you are and where you're from. You are in the Mission Impossible Junior High School APH Virtual Excel Camp. Welcome, welcome. We are glad to have you with us today. Your instructors for the day are Heather, Heather Pichette Spencer and Jennifer Stalmack. Heather, say hi. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Jennifer, say hello. Hey, guys. Welcome. And your student intern, Susan. Say hi, Susan. Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Now, we had two other campers submit their art. And so I am going to display the first one and describe Thomas on a blue piece of looks like construction paper, used yellow paint, painted uh, columns which looks like newspaper yellow and tapes them into a circular shape in the center of the paper. And then with thick strokes coming out from that center are yellow paint rays on the paper. So it's almost looking like a tactile sun in the center and you could feel the rays coming out with your fingers. And Thomas did sign his work. Thomas is written on his artwork. Nice work, Thomas. And Christian gave us a piece of art. This is on a white piece of paper. It is drawn with looks like marker. There are five trees in the background with brown trunks and bright green puffy tops. There's blue shaped outlines for clouds in the sky and a yellow circular sun in the left hand corner. In the very front or foreground of the picture it looks like a river going across in bright blue and between the river and the trees looks kind of like green hills. So you might have to go from the river over the hills to get to the tree. And Christian signed his art but with initials. Nice work Christian. Thank you guys so much for sharing your art. Really enjoy seeing it. And now I wonder, can all of you escape from the escape room that has been prepared for you? I am turning it over to your instructors. Here we go. All right. Who's ready for the escape room? Help us escape from the evil genius. Yes. We need to make it through. Guys, we are locked in a cell in the evil genius's lair. Our mission is to, oops, sorry, our mission is to escape and save the world. We will do that by answering some questions. You guys are going to start by answering questions in our chat box. So go ahead and have your chats all ready to go. Ready for our first question? If you're ready, put a Y in that chat. Who's out with us? All right. Whoa, lots of people are joining right. in. They're ready. All right, here we go. How many digits are in a bank card pin number? So a bank card would be your ATM card. That Harsha, your Harsha says nine. Marcus says four. Marcus is right. There are four numbers in the bank card pin number. Daya got it right. Ethan had it as well. Nice and job. Yes. You guys were able to break yeah. the handcuffs and get out of the trap in your in the lair. At least you can move around freely now. Next question. All right. There are two main kinds of screwdrivers. What are the names of the two kinds of screwdrivers that we normally use? Phillips, good. Phillips and Flathead. Thomas got it. Nice job, guys. Great work. Your uh, feet have escaped from the um, ropes around your ankles now. You're able to fully move around your cell. 
Nice job, guys. Flathead and Phillips head. Phillips and flat. Nice job. Next question. What degree of measure are most ovens in the United States in? Dane says Fahrenheit, Ellery got it, Thomas got it, Daya got it, Lilith. Great job, guys, you're right. Fahrenheit is what we use for, to, for our oven temperature. Can anyone think of another type of temperature measure that's used for different things and in different countries? Oh, yep, there's Lilith, so Celsius. Celsius, nice yep, they got it. All you right. guys are so smart, we're super impressed with you. Next question. Okay, this is a true or false. So you can put a T for true or an F for false in the chat. When choosing a job, your personal interests are not important. When choosing a job, your personal interests are not important. We got all the Fs, good job. <laughs> Y'all understand that it's important to do what you love. Find nice something job. that interests you so that you wanna do it. Great work, everybody. All right, we've now been able to move around the room and you found a piece of metal stored in the corner of the room. So you might be able to use that to either pick the lock or dig your way out. Let's see what happens. Next question. What are expenses? A, a bank account. B, things that you spend money on. C, a plan for spending and saving money. Or D, a card that acts like a check. Good, we have lots of Bs. It is B. Expenses are things that you spend your money on. Yes. Nice All job. Right. And it looks like that little piece of metal is a key. Let's see if we can find a lock that it goes to. All right. True or false? Long, messy hair is acceptable for a job interview. Should you walk into a job interview with long, messy hair? False, false. Everybody's getting it. False. Look at all these falses and Fs. Good work, everybody. Nice job. All right, we found a lock on the door. Let's see if we can get the key to fit in, and maybe it'll unlock the lock. Next question. The highest level academic degree you can receive is A, a master's degree, B, an associate's degree, C, a bachelor's degree, or D, a doctorate degree? We got a lot of Ds and some As. The correct answer is D, a doctorate degree. Great job, everybody. So um, in college, if you go to a junior college or a local college, you can get an associate's degree or you can go to a four-year university and that four-year degree is called a bachelor's degree. If you continue on after your bachelor's, um, usually it's about two more years, that's a master's degree, or you can go from bachelor's to a doctorate degree, which is usually at least four years. That's a much longer process, but good job. Nice job, y'all. All right, we have broken, the, or the um, lock came open, so now we're free in the um, evil genius's lair. Let's see where we can go next. All right. Resources used to seek employment. How would you find a job? The internet, networking, newspaper ads, or all of the above? You guys are getting them before we even read them. Great work. You guys are so fast. You're just on point. I love it. Yeah. Yes. So all of those things could be used. The internet, networking, and back in the day, we used to go through the newspaper and circle the want ads. They were called want ads, and that's where you would find a job. So you might want to ask an older family member about that. And some people, they still post them, I think. And one thing, if you don't know, networking would be like if someone was, hey, we're hiring at this location, um, come in and put a job application. It's like word of mouth type talk. So if you have a friend that works at a restaurant or a friend that works in a business that you want to get a job in, they might tell you, oh, you'd be really good at this. Come in and apply. And that would be how you might get a job instead of having to look up the paperwork for it. Yeah. And tell when you're ready for a job, tell everyone, you know, put it out there to all of your friends, family, teachers, because you never know who knows somebody. And that's how things happen through networking. All right. So we are now in the dark, creepy, dungeonous lair, and we are free of our cell. 
we're going to have to slowly move around and maybe it, use our canes to navigate down the creepy dark hall to see if we can find a way out of the um, basement dungeon. And next question says, which of the following is not a trait of a successful worker? A, arrive to work on time. B, complains about bosses to their coworkers. C, tells the truth. Or D, admits mistakes. All right, yes, we have a lot of Bs complain about the boss. So you never want to complain about your boss to your coworkers. You don't know who is friends with your boss or who's going to go tell your boss you were complaining. So that's just something you don't do at work. If you have to complain about your boss, wait till you get home and tell your family. <laughs> Maybe journal about it. Keep it, to, you know, like private way. To keep right, it. yeah. Yeah, it's just not a good way to be. A few people wrote admit mistakes. Can you admit mistakes? Yes, that is the best thing to do. When you make a mistake, you just own up to it and say, oh, I'm sorry. I did that on accident or I didn't realize. I made a mistake in here the other day. I said, um, I said that Miss uh, Emily lived with her fiance and she didn't. And I said, she said, Miss Heather, please change that. I don't live with him. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. Let me, let me correct that for you. So yeah, it happens. I make mistakes all day long and I apologize for them all day long. It is hard, Lilith. You're right. Lilith said admitting, admitting mistakes is hard in the chat, but you know what? It's another muscle. It's like the more you do it, the better you get at it. And it's okay. It does not make you a bad person because you made a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Okay. It's okay. It's better than trying to cover it up or um, pretend that it didn't happen. Okay. Yes. Oh, and I understand what you're saying. Owen said God is perfect. Right. But God is not a human. So. All I'm right. As we human. got out of our cell now, we are moving down the dark hallway and we can see a glimmer of light ahead of us. Let's head towards it and see what that light is. Okay. Now, How often, this is a tricky one. How often do you need to test your smoke alarm at home? Every day, B, every month. C, every year, or D, never? Well, we have a lot of different answers. Some people think every month, some people think every year, some people think never. All right, so the answer for this one by recommendation is B, every month you're supposed to test your smoke alarms to make sure they're all functional and the batteries are working good and that they're ready just in case of any kind of emergency. Nice job, guys. Araya said what? So Raya, a smoke alarm is a little, um, they're usually a little round. Plastic. He's the plastic that you put high on the wall in your house. You might have a few of them in your house depending on how big your house is and it makes a loud beeping sound if it detects smoke. So sometimes if you're cooking and you burn something and there's a lot of smoke in the house, it will, the smoke detector will go off. But if there was a real fire, the smoke detector would go off and that's how you know to leave the um, house. The school, you've probably done a fire drill at school, the big loud alarms that go off, those are from like the fire drill alarms. Those would be the same type thing. They're just household ones versus the big flashing school ones. Yes. They're so loud. Yes, they're very loud. <laughs> All right. So we found the source of light. It was a tiny little window that we can't quite squeeze out. I guess we're going to have to head back the other way and see if there's another way for us to escape. All right. So I'm turning around. True or false? When I use my debit card, the money comes directly out of my checking account. Is that true or false? Owen says true. Raya says true. Daya, Natalie, Thomas, T, yeah, Alyssa, you guys got this. Yeah. Awesome. So if you don't have the money in your account to pay for something, you can't use your debit card. Nice job. So we've turned around and slowly gone pa back past our cell door. We're heading the other direction, but we've come to a dead end. There's a small hallway to our left. I guess we'll have to see if we can get down that way. Awesome. Why might a person your age, a middle schooler, want to open a savings account? Why would you want to do that? 
There are going to be many answers for this one, guys. So don't feel like there's a right or wrong answer. Save up money to save money. I have one. Great, Marcus. I don't know. Okay, for Ethan. College. Save for college. Love it. For college. How can... Yep, to save. Very good. To prepare for life later. Yes, all of those are great answers. Save for others' birthdays. Save money for college. Right. Uh, nice job. Saving for the future. Yes, very good. Saving for a house, saving for people's birthdays. I love it. Those are great ideas. Yeah. All right. So we found the small hallway to our right and we're heading, or to our left, I'm sorry, and we're heading down it. As we start crawling, the hallway seems to slope down and we're going to have to get on our hands and knees and crawl down this hallway. And it just keeps, looks darker and darker and darker as we head down. Let's see where we end up. Blank. Okay. Go ahead, Heather. Okay, blank is communication with yourself. Message is communication with yourself, or feedback is communication with yourself, or interpersonal is communication with yourself, or intrapersonal communication is communication with yourself. So if you're communicating with yourself, you're talking to yourself, or you're thinking something, what kind of communication is that? We have a lot, C, Interpersonal, yeah, C or D. Okay, so there's a difference between interpersonal and intrapersonal. So interpersonal means within the self and intrapersonal means within a small group or a group. Does that make sense? Nice job, guys. Between, uh, right, between, good. So intra would be between, yes. All right, so as we went down our slope, we ended up our, getting our hands and feet are now wet. We've crawled into some water. It's about four inches deep. I guess we're gonna have to crawl through the water next to see where we're headed. Let's see if we can get out of here. Okay, true. go ahead. Go ahead. True or false, to find a store using a map, you need to know the date. Do you need to know the date to find a store using the map? Okay, Brianna says false. Owen says no, Raya says no, good. Yeah, you don't need the date to find a store using a map to see if it's open. Yeah, you might, you might want the date to see if it's open, but you can use a map to find the store without it. Nice job, guys. So like Owen said above, we're now gonna be, have to swim through this water. Hopefully there's nothing creepy or crawly in here. As we're swimming, we are gonna head across. There's another glimmer of light coming down from our right. So let's head towards the light. Okay, true or false? Next question, nonverbal communication is the same across all cultures. So if you went to another country, say India or China, would their nonverbal communication be the same? Yeah, we got false, false, false. Yes, you guys are so smart because some countries, some cultures, you don't make eye contact the same way. There's different things that you do. Some, cu some cultures don't smile at the same things that Americans smile at. Very good. You guys are so smart. I love it. Nice job, guys. Now we found the glimmer of light. We noticed that it is at the t coming from up in the sky, and there is a ladder attached to the wall leading up. Do you guys think we should climb up the ladder to head to see if we can get out that way? People are saying yes, yes. One, there was one no, yeah, yes, no, definitely. All right, yeah. let's head up the ladder and see what's next. It's a trap. Ellery said it's a trap. <laughs> okay. It's a trap. <laughs> so let's see. Let's climb up the ladder into our next question. A priority is something that is A, of most importance, B, of least importance, C, of some importance, or D, of no importance? Priority. Yeah, y'all know the priorities are A, of most importance. If something's a priority, it means it's important. More important than other things, yes. So like maybe doing your homework is more important than listening to music at that time, right? Yes. Or playing video games for the gamers. I do both, yes. <laughs> okay, yes. Sometimes you can do them both at the same time, multitasking. Nice job. Wonderful. So we got to sorry. So we got to the top of the ladder and we realized that there's a trap door. 
There's a latch on it. We are gonna have to climb back down and see if we can find something that we can pry open the latch with. So at the bottom, maybe, we, oh, Owen says we can go back and get the key. <laughs> Marcia says don't open it. Dane <laughs> said let's not keep going. <laughs> we're just gonna be stuck in the dungeon forever. <laughs> so we're gonna just climb to the bottom of the ladder and see if we can find something to pry open our trap door with. Theo has a great idea. He says to open the latch with the key. Oh, should we run back and grab our key maybe? Let's see if there's something at the bottom here. <laughs> okay, let's see our next question. This is super important always, but especially right now with this pandemic. What are the proper hand washing techniques? So A, use warm soapy water and wash for 20 seconds. B, use warm water and wash for 10 to 15 seconds. C, use cool soapy water and wash for 20 seconds. Or D, use hand sanitizer. So which one of those would be proper hand washing techniques? Yeah, A, uh, we have Most a lot of A. Yeah. So at least 20 easy. seconds. So guys, if you sing happy birthday twice or the alphabet, couple times. It's more than just shh, 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 I'm done. Got to scrub those fingers under the nails, inside, outside, back of hands too. If you want to hear the whole song, I'll sing it. <laughs> <laughs> we had a couple people who did say hand sanitizer. While hand sanitizer is a great alternative that you can take places, it is not the same as washing your hands really good. So if you're walking out of a grocery store or something and use hand sanitizer, that's a great option before you get in your car. But it, when you get home, it's still a good idea to really wash your hands good. Yeah, yeah, hand sanitizer is kind of like the stopgap, but you should still use soap and water. Great work. Yeah, and wrist too, somebody brought up wrist. Yes, tops of hands, backs of hands, under your fingernails, your wrist, the whole nine yards, you got it, smart kids. Yep, Natalie, you definitely can use hand sanitizer too, for sure, we're not discounting hand sanitizer. It's just not, quite the same. You got to do both all the time. All right. So now we're at the bottom of the ladder and we are searching around for what we can use. There is a small piece of metal, a rope, and a um, crowbar. Which one thing do you think we should use to try and pry open our trap door? Tame none. I went to the crowbar. People oh. are liking the crowbar idea. Yeah. Is this? I missed that. Neither just go back. <laughs> All right, so crowbar it is. Let's see if we can head back up the ladder after this question. All right, <laughs> so the next question is a scenario. So something that we're pretending happened. David turned the pot of the handle, turned the pot handle, excuse me. David turned the pot handle toward the back of the stove because he was afraid his little brother was going to mess with it. Is that safe or unsafe? Dane left the group and walked back to his cell. He feels safe uh -huh. right there. <laughs> okay, so is that safe or unsafe? Unsafe, unsafe said Ellery. Safe said Lilith. Okay, so we have a mixed bag here. Yeah, right. so when you have um, a pot on the stove, it's okay to turn the handle toward the back and remember where you turned it if you can't see it very well or at all. Because if you have it, um, if there's a little person in your house, a little brother or sister, and they they reach up to pull on it to see what it is, because little kids can't see over the stove, they could pour everything on them and burn themselves really bad. So it is safe to turn the handle to the back. Nice job. So we have our crowbar and we are back up at the top of the ladder at the trap door. And we are prying open our door. Let's see what, if we get through. All right. Somebody was asking if this is for middle schoolers. Yes, middle schoolers cook for sure. Um, so our next question is, what happens when a worker is promoted? So what does it mean to be promoted? A, he or she retires. B, he or she is moved to a lower position in the company. C, he or she is moved to a higher position in the company. Or D, he or she changes careers. Okay, see, yeah, you guys know all about the promotion. Can I go back to the cell, Harsha? <laughs> yeah, see, um, so it is moving to a higher position in the company, yep. 
Nice That's job. Yes. All right, so we broke through the trap door and now we can see the light around us. We are actually in the upper level of the lair now. So we're gonna have to see where we can head to try and stop the evil genius. There's two hallways. There's a right hallway and a left hallway. Which one should we go down now that we're out of the trap door? Right, right, right. I got one left, whichever <laughs> seems. Ellery says whichever one seems less malevolent. <laughs> I, I got a lot of right. I guess we're heading right. <laughs> All right. All right. So for our next one, check. True is another true or false question. Checks should be written in pencil. So if you want to write a check out of your checking account, do you do it in pencil or in pen? So checks should be written in pencil. Yeah, false. Very good. Yep, you want to write them in pen so that somebody can't erase it and rewrite a different number. Because if you wrote a check in pencil, um, somebody could erase your pencil leave your signature and change the amount. So if you were giving them, yeah, it is forgery. That's exactly what it's called, Lilith, but it does happen. So that's one reason why we sign things and write checks in pen. Can you braille your name on a check as a signature? You would still have to sign it. You could braille, you could braille it, you could get, but you would still have to sign it. So that's why everybody needs to learn a signature. Even if you're totally blind, you, you still need to learn a signature. Yeah, the braille could also be pressed down and manipulated, true. And nobody could read the braille, so. Yeah, so there's nothing wrong with brailing over a check, but you would also have to have the things in ink too so that the bank could read it and accept the check. Because if it was just in braille to the bank, it would look like a bank check, blank check, they would have no idea. Yep, yep you can use a signing guide for sign, a sign guide, yeah. A signature, signature guide, guide. <laughs> signing, sorry. <laughs> you can, yes, a signature guide is great. So if um, you work with a TVI in your school, you can ask them about signing your name or string. Okay, a wiki stick can work. You can use a wiki stick to make a line and write about that. Yep, string might, might kind of move around a little bit. I think she meant the signature guide has the string. Oh, I'm sorry, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Just like, that makes more sense. All right, guys, so we're trying to find the evil genius to stop his plan. We headed down the right hallway, and we have come to a creepy old library. There's a set of stairs, or we can go straight. Which direction should we head in? Upstairs, up. Up, straight. straight. Yep. Whatever we get the most of. Can we burn the books? No, we're not burning okay. <laughs> not burning any books. Up. Run, I'm running straight. It breaks teachers' hearts when you want to burn books. <laughs> All right, so we have a lot of ups. We're going to head up the stairs and see what we can find. Okay, another true or false. When interviewing for a job, you should be on time. True or false? Is it okay to be late for a job interview is another way to question this, true or false? Yes. Um, some people are saying no. If you say no, clarify that please. True or false. It's okay to be a little early. You wanna make sure you have enough time to get in there. Sure, Harsha. True or false, when interviewing for a job, you should be on time. Yes, Marcus says not okay to be late. Right, that's what we're saying. It's okay to be five, 10 minutes early, of course, but you never wanna be late for a job interview because then it looks like, well, if they can't even be here for the interview, it's not a priority and they obviously don't want this job that bad. Do you wanna be early, a few minutes early or on time? Yes. Yes, do not be late. The boss will yell at you. Well. Probably, you probably wouldn't even get the job if you were late for the interview because they would just think that you weren't serious about it. All right, so we're at the top of the stairs now. We are going to head through the doors that are at the top of the stairs and see what's on the other side. All right, and on the other side is learning about a healthy balanced meal. So a healthy balanced meal would be A, pizza rolls, B, macaroni and cheese, 
C, salad, lasagna, and water, or D, potato chips? A healthy meal, not what you want <laughs> to eat right now. But Okay, we have some Ds. We have C. Yeah, what's out of these choices, which one is the healthiest? Natalie says C. Theo, I agree, I'm on your page too, C, but I want the chips too, right, salad. Salad is healthy. The salad, lasagna, and water would be the healthiest out of these choices. And sometimes you may not have the best choices. Like none of these are probably the healthiest, but right. you may have to choose, like Heather said, you may have to choose the healthiest option. Balanced, healthy, balanced meal. Yeah, pizza, roll, pizza rolls are good. So you could throw a salad and some water with the pizza rolls and kind of, you know. All right, guys. So once we went through the door, there were some uh, armed guards on the other side. Should we run or try and sneak around them? Run, bite, sneak, burn, what? <laughs> burn, <laughs> bang, bang, sneak, yay. Sneak, sneak, <laughs> run. Throw pizza rolls at them. I like that. Throw those frozen pizza rolls at them. I think that's the best one I've heard so far. <laughs> Kidnap them. Sneak. We got a lot of sneaks, so I guess we're going to try and sneak around them and see how it goes. Okay, so we have to be very, very quiet. Okay, so in, a, in, um, in Western culture in the United States and probably where you live, what hand should you shake with? What hand do you hold, hold out to shake somebody's hand? Right, Natalie, right, 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 right. Yes, very good. Yeah, so some other cultures, it might be, your, so dominant hand, that's an interesting one. You shake with your right hand. Shake with your right hand, yep. Just like we stay to the right on the road when we're driving or when we're walking and people are walking the other way, we stay to the right. So just remember that, right-handed. I was gonna say some people's dominant hand is their left. So yes. your dominant hand might be your right but other people's it is not. Right. Yes, I'm a lefty, but I know that I shake with my right hand or people look at me funny. That's a good question. Vincent, yeah, in England you drive right. on the right. Thank you, Theo, I've, or on the left, I'm sorry. Theo, I've been there, I've taken two side mirrors off trying to, trying to learn that skill. <laughs> You're right, so a lot of other countries you do drive on the left, but you still shake hands on the right in England with your right hand or with your right hand. I think Jennifer, you were going to mention Boone's question. Yeah, he and said, what if you don't have a right hand or come up with someone who doesn't have a right hand? And I think it, you're going to shake with whatever hand you have. And people are very cognizant of that and they will shake your hand, whichever hand you have. And yeah, I have on many occasions shook a left hand of somebody who doesn't have a right hand. So it's just very common practice to shake a right hand, but if you don't have your right hand, you would shake with your left. Yeah, and they're probably gonna hold their left hand out because they know, if it's your first time meeting them, they don't expect you to know that, but they know, so they're just automatically gonna hold the hand out that they have. And right now we're not shaking hands anyways, we're just nodding from a distance. <laughs> we're nodding, I started doing a little bow. <laughs> All right, so we are on our way sneaking past the guards. We've had to hide behind a tapestry until hopefully they'll move sooner rather than later. Let's see if we can escape them. All right, another true or false. Should, should you give your personal information to anyone that contacts you through the phone? No, never, never, right. I don't care who they say you are. they are, right? I always get um, notes from the bank, saying, we will never contact you by phone and ask you for personal information, right? So, yep, never. You don't give your personal information out over the phone. It's not secure. You don't know who's on the other end. Only people you know or trust, only if they are in your contacts. Right, Theo, so I mean, if it's somebody that you know, that's a different story, but we're saying somebody calls you and asks you for information um, that you don't know, you definitely don't give it to them. Right, family, right. And yes, you, you can give out your phone number to people that need it for something. But if you get a random phone call and they say, you know, I'm so-and-so from 
one thing that's happened to me this last few weeks is um, I keep getting these crazy phone calls. This is Susie, by the way. I keep getting these crazy phone calls from health insurance people. Like they're trying to sell me health insurance and they'll be like, hey, this is so-and-so and you called us about health insurance. I'm returning your phone call. And I'm like, first of all, I did not call you. And then their next thing is, if you could just verify, just verify your address and da 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 da, da. So they want me to confirm that I contacted them and give them some personal information. So there's a couple warning signs there because one, I never contacted them originally. And two, they want me to give them some personal information. So that's a lot of things you got. And that happens a lot. But, and they, they call from different phone numbers all the time. Yes. Yes. And so, yeah, and it doesn't have to be held in passwords or passwords for anything. That's a good one, Marcus. No, don't give out any of your passwords, not just specifically your Netflix. And make sure you have different passwords for everything. So and not the same password. You were burning for... nothing during this escape room. So <laughs> yeah, this isn't that kind of escape room. <laughs> All right, but the guards have moved on. You guys answered the question right and stayed hidden behind the tapestry long enough that they have moved on so we can head on down the hallway. All right. True or false? All of your clothes should be placed together and washed in the, on hot in the washing machine. Is that how you wash clothes? Do you wash everything on hot all together, all the different colors together? Yeah, false. False, no, no, right, right. Because um, hot can shrink clothes. So if you have a favorite t-shirt that's cotton, it can shrink in the washer if you put it on hot. Tip, wash on cold. Yeah, a lot of things you can wash on cold. Um, and also if you have bright colors, like especially red, red will bleed. There is a, um, a favorite product that I have. It's called, um, what is it called? It's the Shout Color Catcher Sheets. And with those, colors bleed into the sheet instead of on other clothes. So if you're ever not sure, you can get some color catcher sheets. I think they're like $3.50 or $4 when you start doing your wash. If you mix your colors, it won't, they won't bleed, but that's the only way to do it. If you, mix, if you mix colors, they will bleed a lot of times, especially on hot or warm settings. Harsha said use a washing machine. And even when you use a washing machine, most machines have both a hot and a cold setting because there are some items you do want to wash on hot, like my towels and my sheets, I usually wash with nice hot water because um, they're all white and I can bleach them and use hot and it gets them nice and clean. So most washing machines do have that setting. So if you guys haven't had a chance to check out your washing machine or if you have to go to the laundromat, check out the laundromat washing machine with your parents, uh, maybe that's a good skill that you guys could ask about and have them kind of show you the different functions of your washing machine. Um, over the next few weeks. All right, so we are now moving down the hallway and we have come to three different doors. Door one, door two, and door three. Which one do you think we should open? One, two, two, one, two, three, <laughs> two, two. Open them all, I like that. Two, we Which have to one pick one. Should open first. <laughs> Three, 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 <laughs> one. I've got a lot of ones and a lot of threes. A lot more, oh, more ones. Some more threes. All right, so we're going to go into door number one, it looks like. Let's see if we can get through door number one. Okay, so to get through door number one, we have to answer this question. Which of the following are considered utilities? Gasoline, electric, Netflix, or groceries? Which of those are utilities? B, B, electric. Some people are saying gasoline, Netflix. Yeah, so electric is a utility. It's something that keeps your home going that you need. Um, gasoline is something that you fill up your car with, but it's not considered a utility. Netflix is considered actually um, a luxury. That's not something that you need. We need water and power. Maybe we should ask what are some other utilities? Um, if you guys 
know some things that are some other utilities that you have to have in your home, why don't you tell us in the chat? Well, a house, a house water, is something okay. you have to have, but what do you have to have water. in your home? Water Besides electric one. and water. Yes. Clothes, Better yeah. Water, food, yep. Heat. Heat, yes. Yeah, and so clothes or air are- conditioning. Yeah, shelter, clean. So clothes are not considered a utility, though. Utilities are certain things that we need to keep the house or the apartment or whatever you live in going. Heating and cooling system, exactly. You need heating and cooling. Electric. Electric. Water. water. Mm -hmm. um, those things are all utilities. So your parents would pay utilities every month to keep the lights on and the heat and air on. Okay? Those are all utilities. Yeah, so phone is generally considered a utility too, and probably, I guess, internet, yeah. It's starting to be considered a utility, but a long okay. time ago it wouldn't yeah. have been. But in 2020, these things are now considered <laughs> a utility. utility. And so you're going to start seeing things like the typical gas, electric, and gas meaning um, uh, a, a gas fuel. Some people out there use gas fuel instead of electric. I so have gas that could be the confuser of gasoline okay, and gas yeah. fuel are two different things. So that could be something that messes a few people up because they don't know the difference between the so two the different types of I can gas. explain that really quick. So there is gasoline that you put in your car and then there is gas that is a fossil fuel that runs through the ground that can work kind of like electricity. Okay, so there, that's the difference in the gasoline that you put in your car and the gas that is a utility. And the gas um, you put in your car is liquid, right? And the gas right. that runs through your house is... Um, it's gas. a fume, it's a vapor. Yeah, vapor, thank you. Like, I said, yes. because... So that's the difference. And I have gas in my home that actually runs my um, heating system. Okay, sometimes it's called propane. It's like propane. If you have a gas sense? stove, you may have, some houses yeah. may have a gas stove. <laughs> Theo, well, that's a good question, Theo, because door number one was locked. So we're going to try door number two next. Can you guys answer the question and get into door number two? All right, here we go. Ready? When creating a budget, what should you plan to pay first? A, utilities. B, Netflix and Hulu. C, buy new clothes. Or D, go to a restaurant. Where's the priority there? Yeah. Oh, smart people, utilities. Yeah, because if you don't have heat or air or water, it doesn't matter if you have new clothes or you went out to eat. Yes, that's definitely the priority. Very good. Yeah, all of them would be great, but if you have to pick one bill to pay, the utilities are the most important. Nice job. So we have gotten into door two. It was unlocked and behind... Yay. Door two is a set of computers, a whole big wall of screens and panels and lights and computers. And let's see what we can do with them. Okay, here we go. True or false, is it safe to ask anyone on the street for help with directions? We have some falses, not always. False sometimes, false, okay, yeah. Uh, yes, says Harsha. False. Yeah, so it's really important to know your surroundings. And you definitely, if you're, if you, if there's somebody, if there's a safe person to ask, maybe there's a store right around, you can ask for directions in the store. I would definitely go to a, a right, use GPS, GPS, said Lilith. I would definitely try to find somebody that you know is a safe person to ask for directions. Maybe the bus driver before you get off the bus or a store clerk if you're walking out of a store. Ask them before you leave the store for directions. Yeah. Nice job. So we have run over to the computers and started turning them on to see what information we can find and maybe figure out where we are. Let's see what happens next. Okay, so our next question is another true false. It is disrespectful to wear your earbuds when using voice to text in social gatherings. It is disrespectful to wear your earbuds when using voice to text in social gatherings. Is it disrespectful when you do that? We have 
mostly trues, a few falses. I don't know. Yeah, some people don't know. So, is it, Jen? Yes, true. It is disrespectful in a social gathering to try and voice the text. Um, you may want to have an earbud in so you can hear what your phone is saying, but you don't want to just be talk to texting while everyone else around you is having trying to have a conversation or if you were in um, like a presentation of some kind and you're just talking over everything that is happening around you. You want to make sure that you're being respectful of your surroundings and maybe step outside or step away. But the headphones are definitely useful where then that people can't hear your phone, which is being respectful. So it's kind of a catch 22 on that one because you don't want to be talking through your headphones and having making everyone listen to everything going on on your phone too. Right. Have you ever walked into a room and you didn't realize the person was talking because they had an earbud or something in and you couldn't see it and you think that they're talking to you and they're not and it's just awkward and weird. So that's, that's why. So when you, if you're at a social gathering, then either you're engaged with those people or you step off to the side somewhere else where you can, where you can respond to your text or call someone or something like that instead of doing it right in the middle of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. That's just one of those, um, social things, social norms. And there's a lot of people that do it and it's just rude, you know? Yeah. You can talk. You're not saying don't text, but we're saying don't talk. You know, if you're at a table and there's 10 other people there, you don't want to be talking into your phone to do voice to text because then the people around you are thinking that you're talking to them or wondering why you're on your phone instead of engaging with them. So if you need to like, just like you need to take a phone call or something, you just step to the side or go, go out to another even area. If you were to take a phone call, even a sighted person, if they're going to take a phone call at the dinner table, they're going to, they, the respectful thing to do is to step away from the table and away from everyone else and excuse themselves for a second and um, finish their phone call or text and then come back to the table. Yeah. The yeah. That was, Right. I, I, I read it kind of funny too. That's why I asked Jen. So, so yeah. So even as adults and teachers, we rely on each other too, because not everything's clear to us all the time. Alrighty. So we are now in the room and the computers have turned on, but oh no, someone's trying to come in the door. We're going to have to figure out what to do next. All right. So if, Imagine that you're a little bit older and you're working. So when you're having an issue, a problem with your coworker, who should you speak with first? A parent, your boss, the coworker, or your teacher? So if you're having a problem with somebody or in school, if you're having a problem with a classmate, who would you talk to first about that? Would you go straight to your parent, your boss, coworker, or the, or the student that you're having the problem with, or your teacher? Okay, so we have a lot of different answers. So generally when you're in a work setting, if you're having a hard time, if you're having an issue with a coworker, you would want to talk to them first. You'd want to try to resolve it between the two of you before you go to your boss. Yeah, so Rain got that. Nice job, guys. All right, so you had lost. Oh, Owen asked a question, sorry. He said, what if it is your boss that you're having a hard time with? Bias said her just hide. Yeah, you don't want to hide though because eventually you've got to get it straightened out. So, so yeah, I let's talk meant that for the escape room. I'm sorry. I think Ryan meant that for the escape room for us to hide, not from the boss. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So ask the person above them. That's it. That's a potential idea. If you're having an issue with your boss, usually there's somebody above your boss too. Um, but again, you could try to talk to your boss and say, I'm not sure, you know, um, depending on what the issue is, just try to talk through it. Go ahead, Susan, you look like you want to say something. Well, I think one of the things that I have found is typically when there's an issue going on, the person above the boss or your coworker is always going to ask you first, did you talk to them about it? So even if it is an issue with the boss, um, the boss's boss is going to say, did you talk to your boss? So um, you are going to you know, want to go to your boss and say, hey, I'm having an issue. Um, can we resolve this between ourselves? And then if you cannot resolve it between yourself, you, between you and your boss, then you may want to go to whoever is above the boss and say, hey, I talked to my boss about it. We're still not able to work it out. What do I do next? 
Um, because you always want to make sure that you have had that conversation first. So when they ask you, have you talked to them about it? You can say, yes, I have done that. Yeah. Okay. So step one is going to the person that you're having the issue with and just, you know, respectfully talking to them about it. Yes, Theo, sometimes um, that does happen. You And if you don't feel comfortable talking to them about it, um, you can always just skip that step and make sure you tell the the person at the next level, you know, I'm just not comfortable in that situation. Um, and the reason I'm not comfortable is this. And explain why you're not comfortable having that, the conversation with that person, um, because that may happen. Yeah, and so Rhea said, um, what happens if you're embarrassed to talk to your parents or a coworker? Right, so then again, it's back to that networking, having a mentor, somebody in your life, maybe somebody a little bit older than you that you can kind of hash stuff out with. Sometimes it's good to go home and talk to one person about something instead of just stewing on it. Whatever you do, you don't wanna just go around, around and, and around in your brain because then it just, the problem gets bigger and bigger in your mind as you think about it more and more and more and it becomes very stressful. So just finding that person that you trust that you can say, hey, this is the situation. This is what I think. I wanna know what you would do in this situation. That's a good way to do it too. And it can be a friend, just somebody that has a good head on their shoulders and you know will give you good advice and honest advice. All right, so we have now hidden under the computer desk because someone was coming in the door. And we see that it is the evil genius who has come into the room. What should we do next? Let's find out what our next question is. We're not fighting or burning him, so. <laughs> Which of these are important to an employer when hiring? So what is your employer looking for? A, communication skills, B, professionalism, C, work ethic, or D, all of the above? Yeah, Owen says all of the above. Lots of all of the Lots above. Of, yeah, Lily, yep, they're coming through like as soon as I said Owen. Yeah, said. you know, when, when okay. you're, yeah, professionalism is important. Um, do you all know what worth, work ethic means? Yes, okay. Yeah, so work ethic means how you do your job. Do you show up every day on time? Do you do the whole job? Do you complete it to your, the best of your ability? It's kind of like the whole enchilada of working, like how well you do things. So that's why in school we learn how to have routines and do things and do the work to the best of your ability so that when you go to work, you have a good work ethic. Do you guys want to add to that? Yes, Dane, they will ask what places you've worked. Um, obviously you will have completed your application, maybe you've taken in a resume that will include all of that um, and what places you worked. Um, but if you haven't worked anywhere and you don't have any job experience, you're going to want to say, hey, um, I'm a great communicator. I can explain my needs, my wants. Um, I'm very professional. Um, and I'm a hard worker. I will work hard. I will learn new skills. I will show up on time. I saw punctuality. Um, all of those things are, are things that you're going to want to stress to a new employer so that they say, oh, that's the person for me. I need to hire that person. Um, so it really is kind of a mishmash of all of these skills. And you're going to want to play those up so that they pick you because uh, we all want to make money. Um, and so those are things that you're going to want to make sure that you emphasize. Awesome. So now that we were hidden and the evil genius sat down in his chair and he is working on a computer with his back to us. Let's answer the next question and see what we can do next to help ourselves get out of the situation. Okay, so the next question is nonverbal communication is A, what is communicated through body language? B, sign language? C, braille? Or D, none of the above. What is nonverbal communication? A, C, D, we got some Ds, none of the above. Okay, so nonverbal communication is body language, however you're moving. So if I want to show somebody that I want to talk to them and I'm open, I'm not going to have my arms crossed in front of me because that's very close. I'm going to have my arms down by my side and have my heart open to them and I'm going to be facing them. I'm going to be making eye contact. Even if I can't see the person, I can hear where they 
their faces by them talking. So I'm going to turn towards them, not away from them. Those are the kinds of things that were that include nonverbal communication. I'm not going to roll my eyes. Things like that, right? When somebody's talking, <laughs> I know it's really easy to tell when somebody's not interested or they're mad um, because you tend to cross your arms um, or turn your body away. And I think that Heather did a great job of explaining that. So when um, you're in a job interview or you're talking to a teacher, you want to make sure that you don't cross your arms or tap your foot because, or things like that, because then it shows that whatever they are talking about is not important to you. Um, and you want to make sure that they are, um, you are receptive to what they are talking about and they are receptive to what you are talking about. Um, and especially where like, sometimes we want to turn our head to listen and things like that. We've got to make sure that we're facing people and have our shoulders facing them. Um, so that they know we are interested in their message. Yes. Alyssa asked how you can tell. Um, Alyssa, if you can think back to a time that you were really upset, can you kind of picture how your body tensed up and maybe your face got angry and tight and maybe your lips pursed? There's a lot of signs where your breathing may have even changed. That might be even something you could hear. I know when I'm super upset, my breaths will get deeper and shorter and sometimes faster depending how mad I am about something. Um, Uh, so there's a lot of different signs that you might be able to pick up on through all kinds of different um, senses. All right, so then now that the guy is back, we'll go on to our next step in our escape room. The guy's back was to us and there was conveniently a rope hanging on the wall. We were able to grab the rope and tie our evil genius to the chair. Let's see what our next step is. All right, so the next one is true or false. You do not need to know where your important documentation such as health insurance or identification are located. So, and this is, yeah, so I got some falses. Yes, true. Yes, you you do need to know where that stuff is located. And since you're in middle school, you probably, you might not, and that's okay, but your parents or whoever you live with should know where that stuff is located. And then when you're out on your own, when you get older, Yes, you definitely need to know where that stuff is located. If there's ever a disaster and you have to leave your house quickly or you need your insurance card for something. Um, also your social security card. To get a job, you need to have your social security card in the United States. So um, I'm not sure about some of the other places that you guys live, but definitely here. So you would need to know where that is located and have a safe place for all of those things. And the nice thing with all of our technology nowadays, there's a lot of apps for most of our big insurance companies. So you may even be able to carry them right on your phone where instead of having to carry around a paper copy that's easy to lose. Um, but as you get older and start having your own insurance to carry around, I know I have my car insurance on my phone and my health insurance. The cards are right on my phone. So I don't even have to carry around the paper ones anymore. All right, so we are now have our guy tied to the chair and we are able to take his keys and head out the door. So you guys were able to escape our escape room. Yay! Yay! Congratulations! Yay! That was Great a lot of work. Good job. All right, guys, do you wanna have a dance party? Feel free. Turn on some music, do a dance party to show that you escaped, tell your family, woohoo, I won the, the Independent Living Skills Escape Room. I did it. Yes, good. Whoever said I wanted to punch them, you can punch a pillow instead. How about that? Go punch a pillow. <laughs> a walkout dramatically. I, like I love dramatic it. dramatic walkout. That's a good yes, one. That's <laughs> fabulous. Yeah. Mic well, drop. Dramatically. We hope you enjoyed this week. We were so happy to have you. You guys are so smart. I love working with you. So what is the next time we're going to meet? Does anyone know the next time we get together as the junior high group for the virtual Excel camp? I'm seeing it. Early August. Yes, August 10th. The week of August 10th is 
when we will meet next. Now that does not mean you can't join in some of our other camps, you're welcome to, but uh, if it's too young or too old for you, you might know why this one was built for your age group. So next week is actually our upper elementary, which is really taking a science theme to it. So if you want to learn all about animals and animal teeth, and animal eyes and animal ears come join in uh, that is what next week is going to be i want to thank all three of our instructors for a fabulous escape room great fun love the story and i hope you have a great rest of your week there will be one more extension activity and you can feel free to send any of the art that you do to me over the next few weeks and we will include it on the first day back for this camp bye all bye, bye thank guys. you everyone you're amazing